Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, we're going to look at how to paint the World War II German ambush camouflage pattern. Ambush camouflage pattern was a factory applied camouflage pattern that was used by the German military in World War II. And I don't think it was used for very long, but it is a very popular topic for model painters. I thought in this video I should give it a try and show you what I've learned by painting it, and perhaps it can help you producing your own ambush camouflage models in the future. So, Let's get to it. As with virtually every other model painting project I ever do, I start with a primer. Now, often I'll prime a tank in a black primer first, but I wanted to keep the overall finish fairly light so the camouflage patterns stand out. So I went straight to a German yellow primer and went ahead and primed the whole vehicle. I gave it two thin coats to try to get the coverage fairly even, and not to obscure any detail. After the primer had dried, then I went on to earth yellow, and I sprayed this onto the upper surfaces and down the sides, anywhere where more light would collect. It's a little bit lighter than the base color on the primer, so I tried to use that to start building some highlights. With that layer dry, then I went on to ivory sand and repeated the process, only I focused even more on upper surfaces and anywhere where the light would be striking the tank directly. Now I started on the camouflage itself, and I started with armor brown. I painted it in wavy lines on the outside of the model, and then went ahead and did the same thing with camouflage dark green. The trick here is not to overpower the model by using too much. One of the most interesting and distinctive elements of the ambush camouflage pattern is its use of dots. So I went ahead and poured out some camouflage dark green, and then using a stippling motion, went and applied green dots into the middle of anywhere where the yellow dunkelgelb was showing through. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to stipple, that's basically just making a jabbing motion with the point of your brush. When you're doing this, make sure you don't overdo it. On a fine scale model, a lot of really small details will make the model look messy from a distance. In this case, when it comes to applying the dots, less is more. Once the green is on, then I go and take out the Panzer yellow color and go and apply those dots the same way as before, but in the areas that already have the larger camouflage green or armor brown patches. At this point I decided the model needed a quick general highlight, so I poured out some German yellow paint, added a little bit of ivory to it, maybe just a couple drops, and then grabbing a stiff bristle brush, went and dry brushed it over the whole model. I wanted to try to keep the pigment accumulating on the upper edges and towards the sides where the light would be reflecting directly off the tank. Now I come to a stage that's often referred to by model builders as cleanup. And here I just take out some black acrylic paint and go over the tracks and the tools and any other details that aren't the same colors as the camouflage on the hull. This just helps provide a foundation for the painting later. When the cleanup is finished, it's now time to start chipping. I start with the light color by taking ivory paint, mixing it into German yellow, and mixing it up so it's basically almost just white. Then I go in and paint streaks and dots on the model where I figure different amounts of wear would accumulate. After this layer is dry, then I go back with a finer brush, take out some hull red, and put some lines and dots into the middle of the lighter patches. Now I go and mix hull red, ivory, and German yellow together to get sort of a light reddish gray, and I dry brush that over the tracks of the tank. 
At this time I also paint the various tools on the tank brown. After that's done, I then go ahead and put on the decals. Here I need to add a note. Just in hindsight, I really put the decals on too late in the process. I probably should have put them on before the chipping. That way I could have chipped over top of them to downplay the contrast with them a bit. But anyways, the result still looks okay. But as a mental note for next time, decals go on earlier. With the next steps, I need to switch to using enamels. And since enamels can sometimes damage underlying acrylics, I go ahead and give the model a couple coats of satin varnish to protect it. At this point I decided to do something that I don't always do with my models, and that is apply a filter. A filter is an enamel wash that sits over the top of the model, but unlike regular washes, doesn't go into the crevices to deepen the shadows. Instead it sits over top of the colors to smooth out the transition from one color to the next. If a model is looking kind of artificial or chalky from dry brushing, then often a filter is a really good way to fix this. I got out my filter for German yellow and brushed it on over top of the model. You don't need to brush it on heavily, a little goes a long way. I then left this to dry completely before I moved on to the next step. After the filter comes the shading. So I got up my enamel dark wash, which is a dark brown enamel paint that's heavily thinned down. And using a fine brush, I went and ran it into the crevices, the cracks, anywhere where there was deep shadow in the model, and left it to dry for about 10 minutes. After that was done, I took out a brush dampened with white spirits, and I cleaned up any spots where I saw tide marks or where the wash had pooled where I didn't want it to. This takes a while to dry, so after this was done, I left the model alone for a couple hours. Now it was time to weather the vehicle, and I decided to start with Wet Mud by AK Interactive. I got it out and stippled it onto the vehicle on the tracks, the side skirts, the fenders, anywhere that would get splashed by a lot of mud or wet sand. After the mud had it a little while to set, I then got out dust and earth deposits, which is very similar but a lighter color, and I went and worked it in higher up on the vehicle, above the areas that were showing the wet mud, or I stippled it in some cases right over top of the wet mud. When this was done, I got out some dry pigments, in this case dust, and just went and sprinkled it on over the tracks and over any spot where the enamel had pooled. Following this, I got up my enamel fixer and gently dabbed it on over top. It softened the edges around the wet mud and the dry dust and helped the dry pigment stick to the vehicle. It's hard to tell what the final result's going to be until the model is completely dry, but by the time it had dried, the whole tank looked suitably worn. It was now time to protect my previous work, so I got out some matte varnish and sprayed two coats over the model. Once that had dried, all I needed to do was put on the final finishing touch, and that was to take out a gunmetal weathering pencil and go around the edges of the tracks and any areas that would show exposed metal. And with that done, the model was finished. Though this paint job was largely experimental, I'm quite happy with its results and I think it duplicates the ambush pattern quite nicely. Beyond this, I think that the weathering and the chipping also goes hand in hand with it to establish a sense of texture and to make the model look worn and like it's situated in the real world. In the future, I'll probably make some minor changes to it, namely changing the order in which I apply the decals, but otherwise I think I've come up with a plan that I can use to paint camouflage vehicles into the future. 
That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. Please consider supporting me by checking out my Etsy store, where you can purchase many of the projects I feature in my videos. Right now, you can receive a 20% off discount until July 1st, 2021 by taking the link in the video description. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you do, and press the bell button to receive immediate notification so you do not miss out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.